I have snapshots of some interesting EGs and I thought I'll share those with you. So let's start with our case number one. So this is a 61 year old woman with a history of an old stroke and left sided weakness. EEG was requested for evaluation of decreased level of consciousness to rule out subclinical seizures. Now what I want you to do at this point is try to take a piece of paper and a pencil and write down, jot down, what are your impressions when you look at an EEG of a patient who has had a stroke? Does it make a difference if a person had a cortical stroke or subcortical stroke? Try to visualize that and then let's review the EEG. What you see here is an asymmetry between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left hemisphere and channels that end with the even number are recording from the right hemisphere. Channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. So we see a marked asymmetry in amplitude and frequencies between the left and the right hemisphere. The amplitudes on the right hemisphere as we see here, are significantly lower as compared to the left. Number two, the mixture of frequency is more rich and more pronounced in the left hemisphere, and we have a poor mixture of frequencies on the right hemisphere. Looking at another snapshot from the same patient, you can see the asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. When you dictate an EEG which has asymmetry between the two hemispheres, it's important to dictate each hemisphere separately. And then you can comment that there is a marked asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. Because of the lower amplitudes on the right hemisphere, this may signify a structural abnormality on the right hemisphere, a destructive structural abnormality on the right hemisphere. In this case, that was related to the stroke that this patient experienced in the past. Let's look at case number two. So this is a 50-year-old woman with a right frontal parietal tumor resection and episodic jerking of the left arm and the left leg. Episodes had subsided at the time of this EEG, so the patient was not actively demonstrating any of the clinical changes. So after starting the, this patient on Keppra, which is levetiracetam, the patient did not have any further episodes. Keep in mind that this patient did have a tumor resected from the right frontal parietal head region. So this is the EEG. Uh, I want you to try to see if you can identify if there is any asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. So carefully look at the left parasagittal contacts here, then look at the right parasagittal contacts, see if there is any difference. Number two, look at the left temporal contacts and look at the right temporal contacts. Something that you will notice is there is more abundant high frequencies and slightly higher amplitude in the right temporal head region. And this is most likely related to the craniotomy. And I'll show you another picture. So this, uh, this is another uh, snapshot from the same patient. And we see higher amplitudes and faster frequencies in this right temporal head region. And this is one more uh, snapshot from the same patient. This is what we call a breach rhythm. So B-R-E-A-C-H, breach rhythm. And breach rhythm basically shows higher amplitudes and faster frequencies. If a person has had resection or some other area of encephalomalacia in the same area, you can also get slowing in the same distribution, but that slowing is not called a breach rhythm. Case number three, a 27-year-old man with seizures affecting the right side of the body. EEG, this was an elective EEG. This was not an urgent EEG. And let's have a look. We can see some nice juicy spikes, juicy sharp waves in the left temporal and frontal head region. Highest amplitudes are at F7, but you, I hope you are able to appreciate these sharp waves. There is also pronounced asymmetric slowing in the left temporal head region which is in delta and theta frequencies with some superimposed fast activity. This is the same patient. We do not see the sharp waves in, on this page, but we see the delta activity, which is pronounced in F7, T3, FP1, and also extends to F3. And this is yet another page from the same patient. 
juicy spikes, juicy sharp waves, nice high amplitude sharp waves with sharp uh, and a after coming slow wave. There is a nice feel to it. So it's not just F7, it also involves T3, involves F3, involves FP1. And then you have slowing that you see right after the sharp wave, but you also see independent slowing on the left temporal head region. When you see asymmetric slowing and sharp waves in one hemisphere, in your EEG report, you can say that this person, these findings are suggestive of a focal disturbance of cerebral function in the left frontotemporal head region and correlation with neuroimaging is recommended. Since we've seen the sharp waves in the left frontotemporal head region, this person is at a high risk of having seizures from this location. This next patient, this is the last case, case number four, 55 year old man with episodic eye deviation to the right and right hemibody convulsions. So if there is right hemibody convulsions, we will expect abnormalities on the left hemisphere. So as we see on the CEG, this patient had periodic lateralized discharges, which are unilateral affecting the left hemisphere. These were previously called PLEDs, which uh, stands for P periodic lateralized epileptiform discharges. American Clinical Neurophysiology has revised their terminology, so you can go to their website to look at the current terms that are being used. You can see an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. You see these sharp waves, these are not perfectly periodic, but tend to occur almost every one second. And in the next slide, what I've done is I've compressed the EG, so you can see that there is no clear evolution in these sharp waves. And this is the next slide here, which shows uh, the asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. When you see periodic lateralized discharges, this could be seen in a postictal state. This could be seen from a subacute insult to the cortical surface, such as herpes, in, uh, herpes simplex encephalitis can give you periodic discharges, periodic lateralized unilateral discharges. A uh, brain abscess can give you these findings. A brain tumor can give you these findings. A subacute stroke can give you these findings. So these findings are not specific for the underlying etiology, but can be seen in subacute insult to the cortical surface. Now, this is the end of the four cases. Some of you have requested that you're studying for the exams and we're asking for some pearls for the exams. So what I'll try to do with some of my future tutorials is I'm going to give you an exam alert. So these are some facts that I think that every eeg -er should be comfortable with and should know about it. All neurology residents should be able to say what is an EEG. So as you know, EEG is the summation of excitatory and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. The second point here is, the cellular counterpart of an epileptic spike is the paroxysmal depolarization shift. So we saw epileptic spikes on two of our slides in this tutorial. So the cellular counterpart is a paroxysmal depolarization shift. Thank you for your attention and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.